Hello everybody, this is Seth with World of Paleoanthropology, and today I am so excited to invite you all on a journey that we're going to go through on answering exactly what is paleoanthropology. Now, I'm not using a script, I'm not using a guide, I'm just going to talk from the heart about what I know, what I've learned, and the things that I can share with you about this fascinating field and its ever-changing movements. Now, of course, many of you might know what anthropology is, but are just wondering what the paleo part is, and we'll get into that. But it's important, first of all, to understand what we're talking about, and that is, of course, anthropology. It's why most of you are here watching this video. It's why any of us are here in general. And it's just that, that question, that forms what anthropology is. Where did we come from? There are many answers to this question. Some are spiritual, some are scientific, some are far-fetched and in between, but we know that there are many ways to determine where humans came from. And for most people in today's society, that is using the scientific method, a method in which we can ask questions, repeat them, have the same answers tested over and over again to show whether or not something is false. And it is because of this method that we have come up with the theory of evolution. Now, of course, a theory is used differently in science than it is used in English. A theory is not something you just throw around of that was just a theory. A theory in science is a, hypoth is a hypothesis that has been tested over and over rigorously by different scientists and provides the same answer under the same circumstances. So a theory is something that is, it's not proven because that is a law, but it's on its way there. So it's important to understand when we're talking about evolutionary theory that we're not just talking about some ideas people had. We're talking about testable hypotheses, which again, a hypothesis is an educated guess. So we're starting from somewhere that is already based in academia and we're taking that and testing it. Now to answer the question of where did we come from, there's a lot of different ways we can go about it. We can start by digging in places to find fossils where we think ancient hominins, which are our ancient ancestors, relatives, and including us, hominins, not hominids, as those think, uh, that is a bigger group, including more species, which we can get into in another video. But paleoanthropology is the subfield of anthropology that is specifically found to be looking at the fossil record, looking at the evolutionary pattern of how humans evolved, and basically the entire evolutionary side of anthropology. It took a long time for us to get somewhere like this. This is a modern human skull. You and I look like this. Every human on this planet looks something like this within the field of modern human variation. Of course, we all have differences, but this is what our skulls look like. Now, compared to something much more archaic or ancient, we have what's called the Broken Hill Skull, which this is an example of either Homo heidelbergensis or, depending on who you ask, an early Neanderthal. And you can see just drastically how different these skulls are. And these aren't even the most drastically different skulls. But you can see just how much evolution we have gone through to achieve where we are today. And of course, as I said, there's more extreme examples I could show you, but I think this one gets the job done. So how did this happen? How did we come from this, or even earlier, more ape-like forms, to humans, to us? Well, that's a long process, and it's that process which is called paleoanthropology. People who study paleoanthropology are paleoanthropologists, and they include a lot of people such as Chris Stringer, Ian Tatterstall, Lee Berger, John Hawks, Augustine Fuentes. There's a lot of these people that you may have read their books, and they are researchers and professors in the field who are trying to answer these questions of who we are and why we are here. There are many ways we can go about this. We can come about this from a genetic point of view where we test DNA. We can come about it from a protonomics point of view where we're testing proteins. We can come at it from a fossil way where we're only looking at the fossil record, which used to be the only way paleoanthropology was done until more recent discoveries involving DNA and genomics in the 80s. 
Of course, there's just so much more we can learn, and it's never going to end. And I think that is one of the fun parts about paleoanthropology that always draws people in, is that there's always more to learn. And that is something that I will always tell people. There's more to learn. If you think you know everything, you could not be more wrong. There's always going to be the next fossil to find. There's always going to be the next research to do. This field is exploding in terms of what we can do, and we need more researchers, we need good people who can get in there charismatically, who want to share their science, who want to do their work and get things done and answer these questions. The science is only about 100 years old, and we still have a generation that likes to do things their way. And this type of science, in my opinion, needs to slowly but surely find its way in the backgrounds of museums where we now have people up front doing the science who are really charismatic and want to share their findings and explore the world with us and with researchers and people like you and I who are not in the field yet, but we're striving to be there or we're involved in it in different ways. Now, of course, paleoanthropology is just one aspect of anthropology. Basically, there are four main fields. We have anthropology, archaeology, linguistic anthropology, and cultural anthropology. And using these four subfields, we try to discover why we're here. In those four subfields, of course, there are many other subfields. For instance, in biological anthropology or anthropology, it used to be called physical anthropology, so those two are the same. Within biological anthropology, there's paleoanthropology, there's the other types of anthropologies where you study the actual bones, osteological or evolutionary anthropology, and all these things involve working with actual fossils. There's also primatology, which is not exactly anthropology, but they work so closely with anthropologists because all we can base our early human behavior on is modern day apes. Now, this is a terrible comparison. You should not use this as a science. We should stop doing this. But what else are we supposed to do for animals that lived 7 million years ago? But you have to remember, a chimp today also evolved over 7 million years. And what a chimp looked like 7 million years ago is not what a chimp looks like today. Or we can at least assume. So that makes a big difference. But using ape behavior, we can glean some clues as to what early hominins were doing. So you combine all of this and you get a picture not a bright one, not one that's complete, but a picture of what we are doing here, who we are. Filling in those blanks in that picture is the job of future anthropologists, people like you and me who want to enter the field and do their own research and start answering some of these questions that pull at you even in the middle of the night that keep you up at night that you just can't answer yourself. You can't find the answers to, but you know the answers are out there and they are, but you sometimes you have to find them. And that's where paleoanthropology also is so accepting. It is one of the most accepting fields of new researchers that I've heard of. You show enthusiasm, you show, show that you are interested and you show that you want to help. And these professors and these universities will accept you obviously of course depending on other aspects of your life as well but you need to understand that there are positions and fields open in discovering human origins but why should you choose paleoanthropology why should you be interested in it well why are you interested in where your parents came from your hometown why are you interested in where your grandparents came from why, where should it stop? Where should you stop being interested in your ancestors? To me, I don't think there is a line. I think following our ancestral lines back all the way to the last common ancestor between the great apes and humans is where I would draw the line. Our ancestors are millions of years old and they've walked this planet for millions of years, some more successful than others. There's been dozens of species that we now recognize, but of course, there's only one that lives today and that is our species, Homo sapiens sapiens. Now, we're gonna discover more. 
I, I, I will bet money on that. We will discover more. And these discoveries are going to lead to future revelations. They're going to show us more answers. They're going to create more questions. And that is part of what is fun. But if you're wondering what paleoanthropology is, let me sum it up in a few quick statements. Paleoanthropology is the study of human origins. It's not the study of humans today. It's not the study of cultures. It's the study of bones. It's the study of fossils. It's the study of DNA. It's the study of who we are, how we got here, and why we're here. So for this short little video, I hope that answered all of your questions about what paleoanthropology is. This is the first type of video I've done like this. I had a great time. I hope you all did as well, and I hope you all learned something. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos. And if this video is popular, which I'm hoping it will be, I'll definitely be making more of these. So stay tuned. Remember to always stay curious. Remember there's always more to learn. And remember that you're here for a reason. Thank you.